About 100 years ago, uh, there was a fierce debate uh, between uh, Mendelian geneticists and community which called itself biometricians. Uh, Mendelian geneticists suggested that uh, genetics works following Mendel's laws. Uh, there are specific variants segregating in populations according to Mendel's laws. Uh, and this is all what it is um, to, uh, to, to genetics. Biometricians, however, suggested that this is not uh, of any interest. So Mendelian genetics is some sort of auditing. Uh, because if we go and analyze corn in the field or uh, sample of humans, for example, students in the college, uh, or, uh, I don't know, cows, uh, we have multiple traits uh, which we can observe. Well, we can measure height, we can measure um, I don't know, productivity of cows, we can measure uh, various agriculturally important traits or evolutionary important traits. Uh, and those usually don't segregate, they don't follow Mendelian laws. However, it doesn't mean that they are not genetic, because we certainly see that relatives are similar to each other. And if we try to uh, explain how much of variation in the trait is due to familial segregation, then for example, for height, we can explain 80% of height uh, by height of both parents. And the idea was that this has nothing to do with Mendelian genetics, meaning that Mendelian genetics is not really useful, useful for agriculture, and Mendelian genetics has nothing to do with evolution, because uh, most of phenotypes, most of traits important for evolution, they uh, actually follow this complex trait pattern. Uh, and now, of course, uh, we're talking about uh, complex diseases versus Mendelian diseases. So we know that there are uh, diseases which are extremely rare and segregate in Mendelian fashion, but there are many human traits, uh, including uh, fasting glucose and blood lipid levels uh, or risk of type 2 diabetes or asthma. And genetics of those traits is not Mendelian. However, they also show segregation, uh, so very good uh, familial clustering, and uh, risk uh, for individuals is greatly increased if their relatives uh, are affected. In 1918, uh, there was a fundamental paper published by Fisher uh, suggesting the following model. This complex non-Mendelian traits uh, follow laws of genetics, but in a different way. They are influenced by many different genes. Uh, and each gene, each locus, actually follows Mendelian segregation in the population, which is now very obvious because we know uh, about nature of DNA variants. And uh, in 1919, it wasn't as clear to Fisher and, and the community. So each locus follows Mendelian segregation. However, the resulting trait is given by, uh, is determined by influence of each gene separately. So some of these individual influences result in the value of the trait, plus extra non-genetics influences. Fisher was able to explain a lot of observations. He was able to explain why many of the traits, which we call quantitative, uh, follow um, what is known as normal distribution in statistics, so well-known bell-shaped distribution. Uh, he was able to explain response to artificial selection in agricultural species. He was able to explain a lot of evolutionary observation. So his model uh, became well accepted by the community and uh, created this bridge between Mendelian genetics, uh, evolution, agriculture, and genetics of complex traits. And now, of course, we're mostly interested in uh, traits imp important for medicine. We still use this model. However, there are many unknowns. This unknowns arise uh, from the question how many genes, how many individual loci would actually impact individual trait. Our variants which uh, are involved in the trait, very rare, uh, is this combination of individual variants. Uh, each variant is found once in 1,000 people, in 2,000 people, or we can talk about population, not necessarily people, we can talk about uh, various traits in Drosophila or an E. coli population, do they interact? Is this model uh, of additivity where they each influence trait independently uh, a reasonable model or they don't act independently uh, and there are non, uh, 
uh, there are specific nonlinear interactions between them. Uh, all of these questions uh, are still not answered, and they are very important uh, in, in this post-genomic era uh, to study, uh, uh, to design studies uh, of genetics of these complex traits. There were several uh, attempts uh, to approach genetics in different fashion. Uh, first, methods used in Mendelian genetics uh, have been applied to a number of complex traits, largely unsuccessfully. The idea of this methods, uh, these methods are called linkage methods, um, that you follow specific pedigree, specific family, and you try to find genetic variants or uh, specific places in the genome which follow the same pattern as, um, as traits in the family. So you try to correlate uh, changes in DNA to changes in the trait. These methods have been tremendously successful in Mendelian uh, uh, variation, uh, but did not uh, bear fruit for the analysis of complex trait. Then the uh, community of statisticians realized that a uh, simpler design of association, of trying to uh, look at frequency of specific allele and correlate it in a sample of unrelated individual with the trait value, is statistically a better way to approach um, uh, uh, complex traits. And multiple studies of associations along the genome have been done uh, for many phenotypes, and there are thousands of, of loci uh, have been discover discovered starting 2007-2008. However, most of those uh, have very small effects on the trait they carry very small amount of risk. Does it mean that most of these complex traits are influenced by multitude of variants of very small effect? Does it mean that most of the variants are rare in the population, so we do not have statistical means to find these associations? Or does it mean that these variants interact with each other uh, in a nonlinear manner, masking these associations, and, and it is difficult to find them? There are several attempts to answer this question. Uh, one is uh, to study models of population genetics, trying to see what is feasible. Uh, and there are several key results uh, out of this model. The question whether alleles are more common versus rare, they have larger effect or smaller effect, uh, is related to natural selection. Uh, we do not assume that natural selection necessarily acts on the trait itself. For example, if there are genetic variants influencing type 2 diabetes, it doesn't mean that selection actually cares about diabetes risk. It may or may not. Uh, however, those variants which have effects on biological function are more likely to be under selection. Purifying negative selection, as we call it, prevents uh, allelic variants from becoming common in the population. Therefore, most of alleles, most of genetic variants influencing the trait would, would remain at low frequency, and we would need different um, ways uh, to analyze them. Uh, and now with sequencing technology, uh, we start discovering this low frequency variants. Separate possibility is that uh, these alleles uh, have uh, very small effects, but there, uh, there are many of them. Uh, there are new statistical methods, uh, relatively new, developed around 2010, which uh, instead of finding individual genes, individual variants contributing to, vari uh, uh, to variation in complex traits, they try to estimate total amount of variation due to variation in DNA. So they uh, take samples of unrelated individuals, and they try to fit a model uh, with certain amount of variation being explained by this DNA variation collectively. And these models are additive, there is no assumption of, of interactions. Um, you can think of this model, it's not exactly um, in uh, exact analogy in mathematical terms, but you can think of these models as uh, you try to analyze uh, how similar are phenotypes uh, of individuals who are more similar, similar genetically on average. And they explain, they claim that the data on common genetic variation explain larger fraction of phenotypic variation. For example, for human height, 45% of variation in human height can be explained uh, by already collected data on common variants. 
Uh, uh, so this is not theoretical modeling, this is analysis of data itself. Separate line of thought and separate debate uh, is ongoing about the importance of genetic interactions and how much of, uh, how much of genetic variation in complex traits is due to interactions. And we and others contributed to different sides of this debate. On one hand, uh, surprisingly to many, nobody observed statistically significant interaction between different genes in complex trait genetics in humans, in spite of studying of uh, thousands, tens of thousands, uh, and for some traits, hundreds of thousands of individuals. Uh, this is surprising because all of the biology is about interactions. Uh, it's common to study what is now called systems biology, pathways and networks, um, various interactions between different gene systems. However, uh, human genetics didn't uncover any of that. However, it is very possible that uh, these interactions are weak, but numerous. Uh, and these models would be in agreement with all current observations we have. So we cannot exclude possibility of these of, of interactions in architectures of complex traits. So there are many unanswered questions. Uh, however, uh, there are some comforting ideas in genetic of multiple traits, and I, I will use uh, human blood lipids, cholesterol levels, levels of bad or good cholesterol. In this case, we know that genes involved in Mendelian genetics in individuals with hypercholesterolemia segregating in Mendelian fashion, many of the same genes have this very weak effect alleles, um, uh, which are found in this large population studies in individuals without this severe, uh, such a severe disease. Many of the same genes uh, in sequencing studies looking at rare coding variants, uh, they also show association with the traits. So this proves that uh, this view of genetics of complex traits being Mendelian genetics at the level of individual genes uh, is, is actually correct. And more importantly, all different genetic studies point to exactly the same biology. Uh, from functional perspective, however, Mendelian or larger effect variants usually are in genes and uh, coding proteins. Uh, and this small effect multitude of variants are in primarily non-coding fraction of the genome. And we think, and there are more functional data coming, uh, coming out about that, they are involved in regulating genes. So this is where we stand, and um, I, we really hope that um, the following five, ten years will probably answer many of those questions.